Welcome to Farm Sanctuary's Compassionate Communities campaign. Here are four simple rules for taking the right approach to vegetarian advocacy. First, enthusiasm and confidence. If someone was encouraging you to make a major change in your life, which one of these two people do you think that you would be more likely to listen to? Person number one or person number two? Again, person number one or person number two? Pretty much all of us would choose person number two, and for good reason. Enthusiasm and confidence are contagious. And so if we want to be as influential as possible, if we want people to get excited about and carry out the behavior changes that we'd like them to make, then we need to work on building up in our own life our skills of being enthusiastic, confident, outgoing, and personable. Of course, that does not mean being cocky. In fact, rule number two is no guilt trips. Our movement has often been guilty itself of using guilt-based messages in our outreach. While it may be factually true that if you ate meat, your food did in fact have a face, that doesn't mean that that's going to be an effective message in getting people to make a behavior change. In fact, the research is crystal clear that guilt-based messages do not work. Actually, they're counterproductive. They make people less likely to carry out the behavior change that we would like them to carry out. So let's all leave the guilt-based messages back at home. Number three, invoke their values. Here are a few simple psychological truths that characterize almost every human being on the planet. No one wants to think that they're a bad person. No one wants to be persuaded by someone else. And no one wants to change their sense of self-identity. What does this mean for us as animal advocates? What it means is that if we want to be as effective as possible, when we're talking to somebody about factory farming issues and vegetarian eating, we'll be more effective if we start off by framing the issue as one that is right in line with who they already are and what they already believe. If we frame it this way, that means that it's easier for them to accept the message. They don't have to feel like they've been persuaded. They don't have to feel like they're changing their sense of self-identity. And they won't feel like they're a bad person or like you're telling them they've been a bad person for having eaten meat up until now. So if I'm talking to someone about this issue, I might just start off by saying something to the effect of, hey, I want to tell you this. I know that you're an animal lover. You love your dog. And I know that you're the sort of person that wants to live very thoughtfully and very ethically. So I thought that you would be really interested to hear this, uh, hear what I just found out about factory farming and how animals are being raised on farms today. If we start off that way, if we frame the issue as one that is right in line with who the other person already is and with what they already believe, it makes it easier for them to accept our message and makes it psychologically much easier for them to carry out the behavior change that we would like them to carry out. Number four, be like them. We all like people who are similar to us. Similar to us in age, in gender, in appearance, in political and religious beliefs, in personality, and in other characteristics. Not only do we like people who are similar to us, but we're also more easily persuaded by people who are similar to us. So if we want to be as effective as possible in promoting vegetarian eating, then we should do what we can to look and act and seem as similar as possible to our audience. At times that may mean dressing up, at times it may mean dressing down. On virtually all occasions, it means leaving our other political and religious beliefs at home, because those things are likely, likely to cause division between us and them. We want to leave our audience feeling that we are pretty much exactly like them, but we're also vegetarian. So remember, number one, enthusiasm and confidence. Number two, no guilt trips. Number three, invoke their values. Tell them that this issue is right in line with who they are and with what they believe. And number four, be like them. For more information on this topic, check out Change of Heart, What Psychology Can Teach Us About Spreading Social Change.